Hi, this is Pastor Jeff, and I wanted to spend a little bit of time just talking about the how and the why uh, we believe that every Christian should be baptized. I get asked this question fairly frequently. What is baptism? Why do we do it? Where did it come from? And so in this little short video, I really want to go through some of the things that are, I believe, most important regarding baptism. Number one, and I want to say this from the start, baptism does not save you. Uh, it can't. It never has and never will. And the chief case in point there would be the thief on the cross. Jesus told him that today he'd be with him in paradise and he was never baptized. Baptism is actually very simple. And in that sense, what we really are doing is just making a glorious profession of the faith that we've already placed in Christ. We're identifying with his birth, his death, his burial, his resurrection, the cleansing that we have from sin, and the forgiveness of it. And so I want to give you really seven points here that you can lay hold of as you think about being baptized. And whether it's your first time, your second time, your third time, your fourth time, sometimes people will ask me, well, I've already been baptized. Uh, I like to put it this way. If you were baptized previously, that's wonderful. Uh, but if you really feel like the Spirit is leading you to be baptized again, maybe you spent some time walking away from the Lord. Maybe you weren't sure about that decision when you made it previously. Uh, there's no specification in all of Scripture that you should be baptized once and only once, and if you've been baptized and never baptized again. I know some people uh, have been baptized many times, and I know people that have been baptized exactly once. I happen to be one of those. Uh, I would encourage you generally only to be baptized once, but you're not going to be uh, any more or less baptized from it being one time or maybe it's a couple of times because you did spend some time walking away from the Lord and you just want to recommit your life. First, I'd like to tell you this, that Jesus himself was actually baptized. In Matthew chapter 3, we find this. Uh, Jesus is at the Jordan River, and he's going to be baptized uh, by John the Baptist. And, and when, obviously, Jesus came to John the Baptist, he wasn't coming for salvation. He himself is salvation. There's no salvation except in Christ. And so, he didn't come to be saved. Uh, he came to identify with God the Father's plan and what God the Father was going to do through him. And so we see Jesus in one of two ordinances that he passed on to the church uh, being baptized himself. So Jesus himself was baptized. The second thing that I would share with you is that Jesus commanded the disciples themselves to then go and baptize others. And in Matthew chapter 28, part of what really is in that chapter where we see uh, the Great Commission, and this is the Great Commission itself, part of the Great Commission of the church uh, in Matthew 28, 18, is all authority has been given to me, Jesus said, in heaven and earth, and therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and then teaching them to observe all things as they were taught. And so notice the order that Jesus gives there. You got to make them disciples first. There has to be salvation. Without salvation, baptism is meaningless. Then you baptize them. Uh, that's, that's an ordinance. The only other ordinance that Jesus taught the church and the disciples passed along was that of communion. So we do a lot of things in church that sometimes people confuse with an ordinance from Jesus, but really Jesus just passed along these two things. Be baptized, and, and in often as often as you do this, do so in remembrance of me, referring to communion. So uh, the, the disciples then would go out and baptize. And then the third thing that they were doing along with that, uh, what we call the Great Commission, was teaching the Word. And so we believe that as Calvary Chapel, and that's what we attempt to do uh, through our services. And then it leads us to uh, the time we might baptize somebody who's recently given their life to the Lord. A third thing is that Jesus himself actually taught that baptism is not what brings salvation. It was believing. You can find that in Mark chapter 16. Uh, Jesus speaking there in verse 14 says, Later he appeared to the eleven as they sat at the table and rebuked their unbelief, hardness of heart, because they did not believe those who had seen him after he had risen. And he said to them, Go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature, and he who believes and is baptized is saved. But... He who does not believe will be condemned. So the emphasis in Jesus' teaching was not on the baptism. It was on the belief. It is sufficient that you believe in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And all that entails are not 
preaching an easy uh, salvation of just mouthing Jesus' name. Uh, but the truth of the matter is, Jesus said it is believing in him uh, that causes one to be saved, one to have eternal life, and baptism is secondary to that. Um, also, the apostles, a fourth thing, taught the church to baptize. In Acts chapter 10, we find Peter speaking of Jesus, and he says this, uh, beginning in verse 42, and he commanded us to preach to the people and testify that he who is ordained by God to be judge of the living and dead, and to him all the prophets witness that through his name, whoever believes in him will receive remission of sin. And while Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon him and all those who heard. And so Peter then would go on and teach them about both the baptism of the Holy Spirit and baptism itself. And so um, Peter just taught them that if you believe in the remission of your sin through Christ, that you'd have that. And then he goes on in verses 47 and 48 uh, to teach about the Holy Spirit and then baptism. So uh, the, the apostles did that. Paul also in Romans 6 taught about the ordinance of baptism. So why do we do it? Jesus did it. Jesus told us to do it. The apostles did it in the book of Acts. The apostle Paul, so if you're one of those people that believe there's a difference between those two, I do not. Uh, but if you do, then the apostle Paul definitely taught about uh, baptizing there in, in Romans chapter 6. And he says there in verse 1, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace might abound? He says, certainly not. And then he goes on in verse 3, or do you not know that as many as, a, a, as there are of us who are baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? And, and he goes on that we were buried with him through baptism unto death. So he kind of describes this whole identification process that, that we see in baptism, that when I'm baptism, I'm identifying with my old self being crucified with Christ, placed under the water and raised in new life. And so this is so important for us because sometimes we get baptism uh, almost in a, in a category by itself where, where like baptism itself can either save us or it does some unique work. It is simply an identification. We're identifying with what Christ did for us and we're telling the world about it. Uh, when, when you really look at it that way, it's like I'm standing there before a group of people when Jesus himself was baptized. There was a crowd on the banks of the River Jordan, uh, and God speaks of his own son during that time. Here's my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. And so we see the reason for baptism. We see who taught about baptism. We see that uh, the, the Bible is very clear that believers who trust in Jesus Christ as their own personal Lord and Savior should be baptized. And so when we think about it, we have to think about it correctly. The Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 actually went on to de-emphasize uh, baptism's importance to some degree. Now, I want to be very careful here. He didn't de-emphasize that we should be baptized, um, but he actually said, Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel for with the wisdom of words, the cross might be made of no effect. In other words, if it were... If it were without the gospel, without the cross, without Christ, then you could be baptized all day, every day, and it's not going to result in your salvation. Now, the Jewish people had been baptizing for more than a thousand years. They had been going into the mikveh and ritually cleansing themselves, which is the exact same process that uh, we see in, in a biblical water baptism with full immersion. They would go in and once they had gone under the water, they would declare themselves clean and come out. So baptism itself can't save. And so Paul de-emphasizes it uh, and says, you know, Christ not divided. The body of Christ sometimes is divided, saying that perhaps you should sprinkle, uh, perhaps you should immerse, uh, perhaps you're saved if you're baptized. But the Bible actually is very, very clear. And finally, I want to remind you of something. If you're contemplating being baptized, after Jesus himself was baptized, it was there that the Holy Spirit led him into the wilderness. Uh, you can find that in Matthew chapter 4. And, and so as Jesus is led into the wilderness, he's tested in, in all ways as we are. Uh, he was tested in his flesh. He was tested in his mind. He was tested in his spirit. And he responded with the word. So baptism, baptism itself didn't 
keep Jesus from being tempted or tested. In fact, it appears that as soon as he was baptized and the Holy Spirit descends upon him as a dove, that actually Satan ratcheted up the attack. So if you're contemplating being baptized, you've made a profession of faith, and that next step is in view for you of being baptized, uh, as we encourage all believers to do, then you can also count on being attacked. The enemy doesn't want you to, to make that public declaration of your faith, doesn't want you identifying with what Jesus did on the cross, doesn't want you identifying with the work of the Spirit in your, in your life, does not want you to recognize you're a new creation in Christ. The enemy wants to put you right back where you used to be. And so count on being attacked a little bit if you make the decision to be baptized. Um, I believe, we believe as a church, that every believer should be water baptized. That means to be fully immersed. And so that is how we handle baptism here. Uh, you're going to get fully wet. You're not going to get sprinkled. You're going to get dunked when you're here uh, at Calvary Chapel as we baptize people. We do that believing that that's what the apostles taught, and that's how we believe we should do uh, that particular uh, ordinance of the church. And what really happens there is as you stand in the water, you're, you're making a confession of your standing in Christ. You're, you're in the water saying, look, I, I believe that I'm dead without Christ, but I stand here alive in Christ. And then what we go through is the symbolism of your old life being put away as you're put underneath the water, the cleansing of that sin that occurs because Christ died in your place and you're identifying with what he did uh, by forgiving your sin, because we know that the Bible declares there in 1 John 1, 9, that if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We're saying, Lord, I identify with what you did. Without that cleansing, without that forgiveness, I won't go to heaven. And baptism basically says, I, I believe that Jesus died for me. I believe that he has cleansed me, and I believe this marvelous way of me saying that when I'm raised up, I'm now walking, I, I leave that pool, I leave that body of water, I leave that beach, in essence saying, I'm a new creation in Christ. The life that I now live, I live for him. I don't wanna go back to my old way, I wanna walk in the new ways. And so we're telling the world that. And it's so important for us, especially in our day and time, that we would have a witness in this world. That's the reason we've been left here, is to witness for the power of Christ, uh, for his name, for the gospel, and for what the word can do in us and to us and through us. And so baptism uh, is a way that we publicly say, Jesus, I'm yours. Jesus, in you I'm clean. And Jesus, I wanna live my life for you. And so I pray that you will consider being baptized. If you haven't done so already, it is essential, I believe, for the child of God to make that statement of their public trust in the finished work of Jesus Christ. And I pray you get baptized. God bless you.